Another day, oh what a wonder, oh what a waste. It's a Monday, it's so mundane. What exciting things will happen today? The yard is full of hard rubbish, it's a mess, and I guess the neighbors must think we run a meth lab. We uh, should the mastery of that. Courtney Barnett. The back, one woman, one guitar, one like voice. It's the right way to do it, man. Marcus Conti reporting for the first time in 2020. What does the future hold? What does the future hold? I just flashed across a couple of uh, a couple of things I want to talk about. Judge Roberts, the dangers of fake news. We'll look at uh, who's going to be on stage in the January Democratic debate. <clears throat> look at some of the fake polling, new fake polling just in. Pete Buttigieg raising money out of his ass. Where's the money coming from? We'll find out. And uh, he's despised among the liberal left. The kids hate fucking Buttigieg. 37-year-old mayor. I can't stand this guy. <laughs> uh, so I went out alone and hating Pete Buttigieg. But Marcus Conti reporting. Before we dive in, I want to um, make a plea. Make a plea to my people that uh, going into 2020, kindly become a Patreon of this channel, please. Wherever I may be, whether I'm on this channel or Marcus Conti News or spreading out into boot, b- bit shoot or fucking whatever else, D-Live, wherever wherever we go this year. I kindly become a Patreon so that uh, this becomes a venture that is sustainable. And uh, let's not listen to uh, to Justice John Roberts, whatever, Roberts, and say that everything is fake news. Anything that isn't CNN or MSNBC isn't fake news. So become a Patreon of the channel. Try to help me get... Um, Marcus Conti News, over 1,000 subscribers, so it could be monetized. I think we're close. I think we're like 800. And uh, so going forward, I just wanted to um, say that I've been kind of uh, I've been kind of focusing, I think, too much time on my own investigating the LARP communities, investigating the, um, the uh, rabbit holes of online, you know, stuff and it is i mean if you watch if you're if you're a fan of this show you i mostly talk about news i'm probably 85 90 percent news and maybe you know 10 15 percent true crime which i consider the larp the larping to some degree uh you know a, a a criminal kind of thing that involves harassment that involves uh stalking cyber stalking of people so i've been Taking a look at like that, I don't I don't talk much about it. Uh, I, I I well actually I do, I, but not on this channel. I've been ha- I've been um, you know uh, putting my head <coughs> head together with Defango and other people in this um, other people in this uh, community that kind of understand it maybe a little better than I do. And uh, but we we're doing we're doing pretty good with uh, fending off a lot of the very uh, pronounced. Uh, predators out there, and uh, they know who they are. We'll talk more about that as we go on. Also, I wanted to mention that on the on the note of LARPers, January 10, Friday, January 10, uh, the QAnon killer will be in court in Staten Island. Uh, I'm almost certain I'll be there. It's Friday. And um, that is the, uh, you know, whether people think, people, what's funny is people think that I'm some kind of LARPer. No, I'm not a live action role player. I'm a reporter. I'm a guy who found an interest in, as a reporter, found an interest in this 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 um, avenue of true crime. Uh, that's all I am. Right? I'm no I'm no fucking. Do I go down the dark side sometimes to try to understand it a little bit? Yeah, I do. But I'm not a I'm not a a, a larper per se. That's 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 the um, that's part of the the allure. That's part of the trap that the this LARP um, uh, community uses. That if you investigate, then you become part of the LARP. They try to to frame you into the scenario, into the storyline. But meanwhile, you're just a, a mild-mannered person poking around, and 
and the lies and the, all this stuff. They just start to pile on all this crazy, crazy shit. I, I know a lot of that doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to me. So that's really all that matters. So uh, let's look at some of these stories. Come on. Let's stop. So his, um, his Chief Justice John Roberts warns about dangers of fake news. Oh, now, that's not just anybody saying it. That's the Chief Justice uh, of the Supreme Court warning the people of fake news. Some read the annual uh, New Year's Eve message as a rebuke of President Donald Trump. Um, let's see. Justice Roberts, who's on the verge of an extraordinarily high-profile balancing act pres- presiding over impeachment trial of President Donald Trump, issued a warning on Tuesday about the dangers of misinformation in the Internet era. Hmm, 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 hmm. I don't agree with that. I think that we are in an age of information where people are somewhat in control again. You know, mainstream media. I, I don't know. I, 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 I would like to believe that that um, you know, uh, independent media is on the rise, but it, it really isn't. We're still uh, mostly wholly owned by Google, right here on YouTube, for example. Uh, but that statement right there is interesting because uh, Justice Roberts will preside over the uh, Trump impeachment as the, the, the he'll be the judge of the Senate and the Senate will ultimately um, ultimately vote. It, this is the quote. In our age, in our age when social media can insistent, instantly spread rumor and false information on a grand scale, the public's need to understand our government and the projections it provides, protections it provides, is even more vital. Let me read it again. In our age, when social media can instantly spread rumor and false information on a grand scale, the public's need to understand our government and the protections it provides is even more vital. Roberts declared in his annual New Year's Eve message, summing up the work of the federal judiciary. Now that's unprecedented. That's an opinion. That's clearly a the the justice of the Supreme Court giving an opinion on news. What about the uh, Second Amendment? We have a we have a I'm sorry, First Amendment. We have a First Amendment. We have a Second Amendment too, but we have a First Amendment, the right to free speech and of the press. Right. Why is the justice saying that what is what qualifies as fake news? Because it's not financed by the, you know, by the big pockets. It's fake. So it's just a little thing to look at. It's a, it's a, uh, it's definitely a gray area, you know, definitely something to think about, uh, where the justice of the Supreme Court is deciding on what is fake news and what isn't. Uh, so, so here's, will, here's who will be on stage January, uh, Democratic presidential, uh, debate in Iowa and how to watch it. Let's, let's, let's look. This is important because, This will be the last time people debate prior to going to the polls uh, in uh, February, I think it's February 2nd is Iowa, not really sure. On January 14th, uh, CNN and Des Moines Register will co-host the seventh Democratic debate at Drake University in um, Des Moines, (laughs) Des Moines, Iowa. In order to qualify for the January debate, the candidates must secure 225,000 unique donors and earn 5% in four DNC-approved national polls, 7% in two DNC-approved early state polls, war. So you need 5%. 5% of the vote. We'll look at the poll in a second. So far, who's qualified? Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, Pete Buttigieg. So that would be interesting for... Now, who who is not who was on that the last stage and isn't on that list is uh, Steyer and um, and Andrew Andrew Yang. I would have loved to see Andrew Yang up there because he has a powerful message. Get rid of Amy Klobuchar, but um, so that's that's good though. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take five five people on stage, dueling it out on January fourteen. So this is good. This is good stuff. Let's just look at. Um, on January 14th, CNN and Des Moines Register is scheduled to co-host the seventh uh, debate. So it's June June 14th. CNN has got their hand on it. The Democratic Committee announced they will 
hold four Democratic debates in each of the early primary states of Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina between January 14th and February 25th. So we have four more debates, and the Iowa caucus is February 3rd, then comes New Hampshire, then comes Nevada, then comes South Carolina, and then March 3rd, March 3rd, I believe, is Super Bowl Tuesday. That's the big event. 40% of the election is decided on that day alone. So here's the polls, fake polls. Uh, Do we believe them? I don't believe them. According to the fake polls, what is interesting is that Bernie Sanders is surging from 17% to 21%, and Elizabeth Warren is, is declining from 19% 19% down to 14%. Because those are the only three that matters. Buttigieg isn't going to win shit. Amy Klobuchar is not going to win shit. Um, right? Bloomberg, they got him at 6%. Wow. See what money, the power of money, money can buy? Money. Right? And they got Joe Biden at 32. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Joe Biden is wildly unpopular amongst the millennials. He can't put 100 people. We still have not seen him put more than a few, you know, 100 or 200 people in a room. His message just falls flat. How is he winning? Bernie Sanders is your winner. Bernie Sanders is your people's pick. No doubt about it. So let's talk about Pete Buttigieg for a second because uh, it is interesting that people are pumping money into this guy, right? Democratic candidate Pete Buttigieg raised raised $24 million in the final quarter of uh, 2019. Democratic presidential hopeful Pete Buttigieg raised uh, $24.7 million in the final quarter of 2019. That's a lot of money, right? It's a lot of money. He's raising money hand over fist. Where's he taking the money? He's a corporatist. So, so that is a tell. Always follow the money. And it looks like the money is... <clears throat> piling it on top of Pete Buttigieg and uh, Joe Biden and probably a little bit of Elizabeth Warren. The only one who's not taking the billionaire money is who? Bernie Sanders. Pete Buttigieg enrages the young left. I thought he was a young guy, right? A fucking, you know, young gay gay mayor from Bend. He's Bend over Indiana, right? He's a fucking Bend over Indiana, right? And... You know, as the Iowa-New Hampshire primary draw near, the South Bend's boy, (laughs) boy wonder, Pete Buttigieg seems buoyant in all important early state polls. Pete Boot, Mayor Pete has been perpetually dodged by a major issue. The youngest and most activated voters in his party all seem to, how do you put this delicately, hate his guts. Ah, poor Pete, poor Pete, wrong hole, Pete. Wrong hole, Pete. That's what they should call him. Right? It's in, in, not out. It's exit only, Pete. It's exit only. Not, it's out, not in. Right? That's fucking crude shit, man. It's a fucking crude fucking joke, man. So, Marcus Conti, trying to get my energy up for this, uh, for this new year. And uh, you could help me get that energy up by becoming a Patreon of this channel, right? And, and, and restore hope and faith to the, to the, the internet uh, online movement. Now, there is no growth on YouTube. I get that. I, I know. But word of mouth. See, I, I'm a fan of, uh, I, again, I've made the analogy of Metallica, who sold a million records with no radio play in an era where radio play was everything. And I believe in that. I believe that the that a, a people-funded you know, uh, news broadcast is is good enough, right? Because if, if you get up to, if you got, like, I, I only have, I don't know, seven, 8,000 subscribers, right? But, but I have engaged audience. I know that, right? And there's people that I've watched that have, you know, somehow they have a 70,000 or 100,000 number next to their subscribers, but they only, they only draw a couple of hundred, right? So I, I believe that, um, that number, that subscription number is really, is not important. I think I make a splash, you know, uh, out there in the world, out there in the, uh, in the world of news. And, uh, so again, this, this LARPer thing, I want to, I want to, um, emphasize that I am on top of it and that, um, there's a lot of activity going on. There's a lot of, uh, legal, legal papers flying back and forth. 
Uh, websites getting shut down finally, finally. Harassment-oriented sites getting shut down with the help of yours truly and others that are trying to make this, trying to clean up, you know, clean up house a little bit. We're trying to clean up house. Right? You know, you could spin it any way you want. Every time you come near the uh, the LARP community, suddenly you become the villain. You're they're, they're trying to sue you in court. They're trying to trying to keep you off, trying to keep you away, trying to back you off, trying to make you the villain for coming in and trying to save the day, trying to shed a little light on where there is none. Uh, so, what's just going on, man? Have a good day. We're gonna try to get, um, we're gonna try to get some live stream going too today. She wants to plan in this. I wanna grow tomatoes on the front steps. Sunflowers, beans, sprouts, sweet corn and radishes. I feel proactive, I pull out weeds. All of a sudden, I'm having trouble breathing in. I'm having trouble breathing in. I'm having trouble breathing in.